what's going on youtube today we are doing sigma hunt sigma hunt is a practical application of the sigma room we have uh, talked about in the previous video so in the previous video we talked about how to create sigma rules what are the usages and objectives of using sigma rules now today we're going to take this into a practical example by applying these on this scenario so what we have here we have this page and as you can see we are required to create a sigma rule for every scenario every scenario represents a, an attack let me call or an attack um, part of an attack like, an attack on a machine so here we are talking about malicious HTML application uh, using search utility to download ransomware or malware netcat using netcat power up for privilege escalation enumeration uh, modifying services for privileged escalation using run once key to add persistence mechanisms 7z archive for data exfiltration and curl and, fa and uh, uh, finally we're going to write sigma rule to detect uh, the use of ransomware to encrypt files so for every single one of these challenges there is a sigma rule once we create the sigma rule we click on the button here to create a sigma rule and we work here basically according to this syntax modifying the uh, required parameters and then after we are finished we click on run to submit the rule if the rule works there will be a flag going up there so let's get started now as you can see here the authors have given you um, for every attack as you can see the indicators of compromise since the use of sigma rules uh, actually boil down or boils down to converting the indicators of compromise into actionable rules that can be used and converted into seam alerts or seam um, queries they have given you the indicators of compromise here guys to be able to use them into the rules and again in this chart you see the attack technique and what are the detection fields that you can also use in the uh, rule and lastly here are the flags okay so let's get started so basically what I'm going to do guys I'm going to I've actually created these rules and copied them to my notes you can find the notes in the channel membership tier 2 specifically so instead of just uh, to save time I'm going just to copy the rules directly and explain them now for the first two rules we're gonna need to write them here because I haven't copied them anyway so the first one malicious HTML application so at the title here we can write the title of the rule say it is Malicious. Malicious HTML application. Okay, and I'm going to leave the ID generation for you guys. You can go to this link and generate the ID status. We're going to type test details. We're going to type detects the usage off all right now we go to log source now the log source uh, we have the product and we have the service these are pre-filled for you guys the product is windows and the service is sysmon so all of these logs have been pulled from sysmon now we go to the detection specifically under the selection syntax element we have the field names okay we can click on the view logs here to be able to see the indicators of compromise and as you can see we uh, sorry to see the indicators of compromise as part of the logs pulled from sys monitor all right so what do we have here we have the event id is is one so we type in the event id the value is one and the other field we're going to use is the image and also we're going to use the let's see here parent command line maybe and also command line we're going, we're going to choose one of them parent command line and command line we can also get back here and check the detection fields that you can use so for HTA payload you can use the event ID the image and the parent image so event ID we have used this the image this is the image so we copy the path uh, 
and we paste in the image and lastly we have the parent image so click view the lock to take the value that's the parent image And you can leave the rest as is since there are no requirements on setting the fields, the false positives, and the rest of the tags. Click on run. As you can see, because the rule is right, and because the rule has triggered um, hits on the application, we have received the first flag. Okay, the next one. The next one is the detection of cert utility download. So basically, the usage of cert utility to download maybe malware. Let's check the logs. So from the logs, we can see that from the command line, search utility has been used to download some, to download Netcat from this website, Hunt Me Please. And the, the application or Netcat is stored under the temp directory. So we're going to use the command line here, basically. And also we're going to use the event ID. What do we have else? So event ID, let's start with the event ID. So we can leave this as is guys and only change the fields here. So event ID is already set to one. The command line now. So now the command line, we're going to copy the path and say here command line equal to this path. All right. So other than that, we also have the image. So let's check the image. This is the image. It's the path to the search utility application. So the image here, just to do a parent. Run. Sigma rule too specific. String hunt me. Focus only on generic indicators of compromise. So we have to remove the URL from here. So maybe what we can do, we can say contains contains all and then we write tab and then hyphen. So here let's say what are the parameters of the search utility. We have dash URL cache dash split dash F. So we can write here set And then dash URL cache and then um, check one more time dash split and dash F. I'm going to explain it a bit because I can't try to explain it at the same time. So dash URL dash split and dash F. So what's going to happen here, guys? command line contains all will stipulate or stipulates that the command line contains these words okay if it contains these words then it's going to conclude that the uh, host is using utility to download something let's check it out run hit count so we have a wrong detection so maybe we have actually um, broadened the criteria let's remove set utility from here Still, we have wrong detection. Hit count one over two. Event ID image. Okay. How about we say image ends with ends with third utility. Okay, it worked. So basically, what we did, we added the modifier ends with to say that if the image of the file ends with cert utility, right, it's going to trigger the rule along with these conditions. All right, the next one for red cut partial, I have the rule written here. I'm going to copy that rule and explain it on the editor I 
I'm not sure I have copied the correct rule. Anyway, so netcat execution. Let's see here. Let's cut the partial version. Wait. I think I am copying the wrong rule. Sigma rules. Detect HTML application. So we start from here. The use of search utility. And the use of power up. So we are here. There is no net cut, I think. Yeah. Okay, we're going to try this ourselves then. Net cut execution. Okay. So let's take a look now. View logs. So probably going to use the event ID again. And of course we're going to use the command line. And the probably the image. Also we have hashes here. Take a look at this. We have the hashes. We can use the hashes as well. So as you can see, not cut reversal, we have event ID, image, command line, and hashes. So let's use these all of them. Event ID will be one. Um all right. If we use an already created rule, it's better and easier than recreating one from scratch. So let's see. Okay. Event ID will stay one here. Okay. Now the image. Let's take a look at the image. So the image ends with netcat. So just replace that with nc. Now the command line. Let's check out the command line. So the command line will contain don't forget that we cannot use um, specific strings as a criteria because it's going to complain. It requires us to use generic IOCs. So we can say the command line contains nc and dash e. So here the command line contains nc and dash e. And that's it contains all and we have the hashes so the hashes we can select one hash let's say md5 hashes okay run No, it's found. Let's see. So, partial uh, hashes command line image event ID. Still, we have no no hits. So, why no hits? Maybe because we are actually. So, how it works here, if you remember, it's gonna work only or trigger and hit only if all of these conditions are met. If the image ends with netcat. And if the command line contains all of these, and if the event ID is equal to one, and if the hash equal to five two. If we remove this one, how about remove this one? Still no hits found. Okay. So let's relax the uh, the condition a bit. So what we're going to do? We're going to split the selection. So basically, we're going to say selection and here's selection 1 and we're going to say that the condition will be selection 1 or selection 2 so here either the image ends with net cut and the command line contains dash e and the event add equal to 1 or uh, the uh, do we have uh, hashes that start with 5 2 or with this hash so if we run now See if this works. Still, this didn't work. Wrong detection. Hit count 1 over 7. Okay, it's if we add. Yeah, let's remove this one. Run. Alright. View logs. So, this is the hash. So, maybe I think. 
we have to modify the modifier here on the hashes because the hashes here the md5 hash is part of the hashes all of the hashes so if we say um, take this down hashes contains Okay, let's run now. And now it worked. Do you think why? Because if you go back to the logs, I don't know, we can't see the logs anymore. But the logs, the hashes field, okay, uh, contained not only the MD5 hash, but also other hashes. So the conditions. We, without the contains it's only going to validate if the hashes field is literally equally is literally equaled to this hash right but when we put contains okay we are valida validating the field if it contains this hash and other hashes which is how it was that's why it worked so next one next one is the power up enumeration Okay, let me have this here. So for the power up, what do we have? As you can see, we have the image. It has to end with PowerShell. And that's actually normal because power up script, it's actually PowerShell script used to enumerate the host for privileged escalation vectors. So when we run power up, we use PowerShell, right? That's why we said the image ends with PowerShell, regardless of the path. We don't specify the path here. That's why we say ends with. Okay, the command line. Now the command line here can, should contain invoke all checks and power up, right? Because when you run power up, you have to specify this command, invoke all checks, to be able to run all, uh, the, the, all the privileged escalation vectors. If you check the view log here, you'll understand what I mean. So this is the command line, as you can see. PowerShell, as you can see, invoke all checks along with PowerUp. So use these two strings to spot the usage of PowerUp. Again, event ID will be one, and the image will end with PowerShell regardless of the path. All these together will form the required detection fields. If we run, we get the flag. Other one, service binary modification. So in service binary modification, we look at these detection fields, command line, image, and event ID. First, let's understand what is service binary modification. Service binary modification is the act of changing the associated or the binary uh, the binary or the executable associated with the service every service has a binary or executable that runs the service if you change this binary or this executive you are doing service binary modification and it's a common privilege escalation method how do we detect that we use these detection fields command line image and event id event id equal to one because it's process creation the image ends with when we change the uh, binary or executable or specific service we're going to use the executable or the binary sc to do that that's why we specify this in the image and of course we don't care about the path that's why we said ends with the command line will contain all of these as you can see strings the first one is the executable right so when you change the binary of a specific service we're going to run sc from the command line config is also an argument binary path here we specify the binary path and dash e if we have these all together in a command line along with the service executable and event id equal to one we're going to conclude that there is a service binary modification taking place if you run this required filter invoke all checks so we have an issue here let's let's see command line did i remove something from the wait Let me go back, check the command line. So we have invoke all checks. No. Nope. We're talking about this one. I 
I think I I'm confused right now. So here, netcat reverse shell. Create rule. Run. Okay, so this one worked. Now the run once persistence. Run once persistence, as you can see, run once is a registry key used to store the values that will run when the system starts. It's a common persistence mechanism, guys, to store uh, values that point to applications or malicious applications where the attacker want them, wants them to start at the system boot up. So we develop a rule to detect any modification or creation of keys at that uh, place. So let's take this. Say create rule and paste this. Okay, so what do we have? As you can see, we have three detection rules. Event ID equal to one, process creation. It's going to result in process creation, right? Because it's uh, at the end an executed or a script that is starting. Command line and the image. Let's first explain the image. So to be able to modify the registry from the command line, we're going to need to use the registry executable. We can see that from the logs. As you can see, the attacker in the image field, they used registry, okay? And the command line, let's take a look at the command line. As you can see, the command line contains these key strings. The registry, add, rich underscore sz, and slash d, slash v. That's how we're going to conclude that the registry modification taking place. And of course, don't forget the wrong one string. That's how we indicate that run one's key is being modified or yeah, it's being modified to include a new value in the command line. If we run this, it's going to give us the flag. Next one, 7z archive collection. Okay, so for the 7z archive collection here, if you go back and find out why do we need to create a rule for this? According to the scenario, Collected sensitive data by archiving by archiving via 7-zip. So there were sensitive data that have been collected using this program. So we're going to create a rule to detect the use of this program. Again, to save time, we're going to copy the rule directly from here. And let's go over these. So first we have the image, command line, and again event ID. Let's take a look at the image. As you can see, the image is using the 7z executable. So if we say image ends with 7z, will be enough. The command line, if you go back to the command line, that's what has been used in the command line. 7z a and this is the file and the file that's being exfiltrated and the switch dash b so the, the unique the, the 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 actually parameters or the argument we can use in this uh, field is a and dash b so we use them here and the event id will be one if you run it will trigger the rule okay the, the last two we have curl that exfiltration create rule all right what's going to happen here so basically we have again three detection fields the image the command line and the event id let's take a look at the logs so the image as you can see ends with curl or contains curl the command line contains this let's go over the command line so curl dash d okay and then we specify the file being exfiltrated and then we specify the destination so the only thing that we can use here is the curl and dash d. And uh, it was only dash d, that's okay. You can add curl as well in the command line. Event ID will be one because it's a process being run. So we run this. And this is your flag. The last one runs them with file encryption.
Okay, so here we have two detection fields, event ID and target file name. So if you take a look here, which we'll is the creation time, event ID is equal to one, file creation. Image ends with ransom, but we're not going to use the image here. You know why? Because here we are not monitoring, we are actually monitoring only for files or ext file extensions created by the ransomware. We don't care about the name of the ransomware because it will change. It could be ransom, it could be ransomware hunter, whatever. So we're not going to monitor, it's going to be the valid criteria to check. So event ID is a valid criteria, it indicates a file is being created and target file name. So if we know that specific ransomware creates specific file extensions after it encrypts the files, we can create a rule that targets these extensions. In our case, the extension is .huntme. That's the extension. If we follow the behavior of the ransomware, we're going to be able to find what are the file extensions, and by identifying the file extensions it creates, we can spot the presence of this ransomware. So we use, as you can see, event ID 11 for file creation, and target file name ends with Again, we don't care about the file name, we care about the extension, that's why we said ends with. Dot hunt me. It could be dot crypt, it could be dot encrypt, it could be dot uh, cryptic, whatever. Run. Oops, it's wrong. Focus only on generic ISCs. Ransom. String ransom. Where is the string ransom? It's testing. The text ransomware ends with hunt me. Even at the equal 11. I can't see the word ransom here. Sigma rule too specific. String ransom. Come on, man. Where is the ransom? Ransom. Target file name ends with dot hunt me. String to. Well, this is weird. Let's go back. Okay, so here maybe we have to say, put the asterisk. Why the asterisk? The asterisk indicates that there could be any string that's coming before the extension of hunt me. The string here could be the only the file name or the path along with the file name. Run. Again, we got a problem. Okay, let's do that. So basically what I'm going to do going to say create rule and here write target file name hunt me and the value here will be 11 for event ID and to run Target finally refer to the provided rule creation standards. Yes, here it will be lowercase n. As you can see, it worked. So it was a bug or something. So that's it, guys. I included all of the rules in the note file. Again, you can download the note file, only this note file, by the way, um, in the channel membership. So. That was it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later.